The Society of Revolutionary Women was a politically based group that formed during the French Revolution on the 9th of July 1793. The origins of the group came after a political section of French women referred to as the Gautrel Nations would decline the right to use the local meeting hall owned by a male political group, the Jacobins. Although the group only lasted five months, the impact it had on France's political and economic scene was of utmost importance and highly contributed to the occurrence of the Women's March in Versailles and the declarations of the rights of women and the female citizen. The group also produced many key revolutionary figures, including its founders Pauline Leon and Claire Lacombe, and other influential women such as Madame Roland and Olympia de Gouges. Even though they failed to achieve their aims of political freedom and gender equality, the women were still able to gain a moral identity for themselves. In 1789, the Estates General created a national assembly which reflected the views of all of the three estates of France. The assembly, which held regular meetings for the estates' representatives, allowed the discussion of ongoing issues of the revolution. In the initial stages of the revolution, the women, who regularly took part in these meetings, voiced their opinions on women's suffrage, insisting that the females of France be represented by fellow women in the national assembly. As well as this, the group also believed in the right to have their own separate assembly, but was still parallel to their fellow male citizens' one. Yet, even after multiple discussions and the growing number of women taking part in revolutionary politics, the requests of these rights were blatantly ignored. There was still a lack of women's suffrage and no civil or property rights, including equal inheritance of land for women. One woman from the Society of Revolutionary Women stated to the National Convention that, You have given men a constitution to enjoy the rights of free beings, but women are very far from sharing these glories. Women count for nothing in the political system. We ask for primary assemblies, and as the constitution is based on the rights of men, we demand the full exercise of the rights for ourselves. The revolutionary women also believed in the need for economic stability, as France's economy was in the midst of a crisis after being torn apart by wars, including the Seven Years' War in 1754 and the American War of Independence in 1775. The revolutionary women's want for stability was also due to the ever-growing market prices, and in particular, bread, which caused women the uncertainty of whether they could afford to feed their families. However, the group took significant action against this rising issue, in what was recorded as being one of their first major roles in the revolution, the Women's March on Versailles. The Women's March in Versailles was one of the earliest rebellion events in the French Revolution. The march, which began on the 5th of October 1789, was due to the lack of bread available and its increasingly high price. Even though the revolution had begun two months before, none of the events, including the storming of the Bastille or the August Degrees, had as much of an impact on the aristocratic ancient regime as the Women's March in Versailles did. The march was a prime example of how women had an immense impact on France's pre-revolutionary government by causing an almost immediate shift in power between the lower and upper classes. This shift had a long-term impact on society, as the revolutionary women ultimately ended the reign of Louis XVI by driving him and Marie Antoinette out of Versailles and into Paris, the centre of the revolution. Almost immediately after the March of Versailles, a petition was addressed to the National Assembly to allow equal rights. Even though most men in power believed that women should be more politically involved in the New France, the proposal for equal rights did not end up passing through the Assembly, even when Nicolas de Condorcet, who advocated for a liberal economy and equal rights for women, submitted it himself. Condorcet stated that he who votes against the rights of another, whatever the religion, colour, or sex of that other, has henceforth adjured his own. The decline of the proposed petition meant that the success from the revolutionary women in the Women's March did not have any impact towards their aim for gender equality, even though it was assumed that they had earned the right to citizenship from their active participation. The lack of recognition of women's rights caused much outrage amongst many, including Olympia de Gouges, a French playwright and political activist who wrote the Declarations of the Rights of Women and the Female Citizen in 1791 and dedicated it to Marie Antoinette, who she believed was one of the most detested women. The Declaration, which was addressed to the National Assembly and followed the 17 articles of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen, almost as a parody, talked about key gender issues, including woman is born free and lives equal to a man in her rights, and no woman is an exception, she is accused, arrested, and detained in cases determined by the law. Women, like men, obey this rigorous law. De Gouges' assertion for the need of equality and refusing to be silent on the topic of women's rights eventually led to her being arrested and guillotined, similar to how many other women at the time were killed for supposedly forgetting their proper place as women. Despite the controversy the group had caused, they still had a significant impact on revolutionary society as they were crucial in keeping France's republic alive. The revolutionary women were not ordinary mothers, but mothers of future French republicans and combatants. As France had been so immensely torn about by war, its future republic depended on them. They were asked by many, including the president of the convention, Erol de Chelles, to give birth to a nation of heroes. When revolutionary women discovered the death of political theorists and women's activists Jean Paul Marat, they promised as a token of their gratitude that they would regenerate the land of liberty with as many morass as they could. Although the revolutionary women were deemed as being superfluous and too controversial, they played a crucial role in the revolution in that they were an essential in order to reproduce more heroes for their fatherland. The group also created many key figures who had a remarkable impact on the revolution. Pauline Leon, a feminist and political radical, impacted the revolution after she became well-renowned for her actions on the 6th of March 1791. 
They want to address the National Assembly on behalf of all the women of Paris that there should be a female militia so that they would be able to protect their homes from counter-revolutionary assaults. Even though her request was denied, she still believed that the right to bear arms would transform French women into citizens. Leon, who along with Claire Lacombe, a founder of the Society of Revolutionary Women, was also a member of many other women's groups, including the Femme Sans Clot in 1793. Claire Lacombe had a highly active role during the French Revolution, constantly seeking equal rights for women as well as politicising France's worsening economic conditions. Lacombe also participated in the storming of the Tories on August 10, 1792, where a mob of almost 30,000 stormed the palace to try and capture King Louis XVI, but soon left, leaving only 300 of the 900 guards alive. Lacombe also proposed the establishment of a fixed wage system, known as the maximum, but it was unfortunately declined. Eventually, Lacombe was denounced by a fellow political group, the Jacobins, who accused her of making counter-revolutionary statements. Although the statements may have never been said, it was the people's perception of the situation that ended her position in the Society of Revolutionary Women and led her to being arrested. The Society of Revolutionary Women came to an end on the 30th of October 1793, where it was declared by the National Convention that all women's clubs were forbidden due to their unnecessary acts of inconvenience. Appeals against the decision were ignored, and the revolutionary women were regularly reminded by fellow revolutionaries that they did not belong in public places, but in their own homes. Just four days after all women's clubs were closed on the 3rd of November 1793, Olympia de Gouche was executed, two weeks after Marie Antoinette and five days before Madame Roland, an influential member of the Girondist group who was accused and arrested of treason. The deaths of these women, who represented a diverse range of classes throughout society, effectively stopped any participation that women had in the revolution and revealed that no matter how major their roles were, they were ineffective in creating a major long-term change for equal rights.